Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website presents eight self improvement lessons that I've learned from well over a thousand clients, students, and other valued people um, since 1979. Uh, of the eight lessons, the fourth has to do with improve your relationships. What I want to focus on in this video is a way of helping to improve your relationships and at the same time improving your self-esteem. Um, this way is learning how to confront other people effectively or successfully. Think of the last time in your judgment that you had to confront somebody. Was it a pleasant experience? What do you associate with the word confront or confrontation? Do you have a negative flavor to it? Many people associate confrontation with arguments, fighting, hurt, anger, stress. It's hard, isn't it? It doesn't have to be. What I want to do here is outline for you some ideas based on a lot of experience, thought, and research that can help you make confrontations a useful tool in evolving and maintaining high nurturance or satisfying relationships. The purpose of a typical confrontation, which incidentally I think the roots of that word mean to stand before. So, does that by itself seem bad? Would you like to stand before someone else? The purposes, typically, of a true confrontation, as opposed to a fight, is you need to be heard by the other person, really heard, heard by their heart, with their heart. Uh, and or, you need to cause change, you need to get the other person to stop something or start something, or understand something. And I propose another goal of every confrontation is to maintain your priceless self-respect. If you don't stand up to other people, quote unquote, that's what a confrontation is, often you will lose respect for yourself. That's a high price, isn't it? So, that's what a that's the purpose of uh, a confrontation. A successful confrontation gets um, either or all three of those objectives after the fact. You look back and say, um, I felt heard. I got a commitment for the change that I needed and asked for or asserted. And I feel good about myself. I like the way I did that. Okay. How do you do an effective or successful confrontation with another person. An adult or a child, doesn't matter, male or female, doesn't matter. I propose that uh, compared to unplanned confrontations, planned confrontations work the best, the highest odds for success. How do you plan a confrontation? Here are some steps. The very first one is to do what I call a self-check, S-E-L-F. If you've studied Lesson 1 or the related videos here on YouTube, you'll know that I propose that all people are run by either a true self, which is a naturally wise component of your personality, or a false self. See the videos about Lesson 1 to understand more about what that is, but to do an effective confrontation, you need to have your true self in charge. Okay? Secondly, identify clearly what's your purpose. Why do you want to do this confrontation? What do you hope to get? Do you need to be heard? Do you need to gain respect? Do you need to respect yourself? Do you need to cause action? You may use the dig down skill, which you'll find outlined in Lesson 2 and related videos and get clear on why are you doing this confrontation? What do you need? 
The third thing I would propose and as a help is to review your Bill of Personal Rights. That may be a foreign concept to you. I propose that all people, you and the person you're confronting, have um, undeniable human rights. Example, I have the right to my opinion. No one can tell me what my opinion should be. I have, my, I have a right to my feelings. I have a right to choose my friends. I have a right to fashion my own priorities. I propose, if you haven't seen one or made one yourself, you see the example of a Bill of Personal Rights in Lesson 4 in the Break the Cycle website. It is the foundation, besides having your true self in charge, a Bill of Personal Rights is a foundation for having a successful assertion with another person. That's what a confrontation is. It's an assertion. Okay, so review your Bill of Rights and affirm that your partner has equal rights. Another preparation step that's important is to do an attitude check. Do you genuinely feel that the person you're going to confront is of equal dignity to you? Not more, not less. Their needs and feelings and dignity are just as important as yours. Uh, the only possible exception is if there is some kind of emergency. That's a subjective call. So, check your attitude, um, check your Bill of Rights, check to see if yourself is in charge, get clear on the reason you're doing the confrontation, then watch for an undistracted time to be with the person you're going to confront, and the final preparation step is to expect the other person to resist. What I mean by resist is get huffy, get hurt, get angry, uh, change the subject, accuse you, blame you, clam up, shut down, lecture, walk away, run away. Um, those can be lumped together as resistances. As with any assertion with anybody, adult, child, expect them to resist. It's a normal human reaction. They're not bad, they're not cowardly, they're not weak. They're, they're normal. Um, think for a moment about the last time someone confronted you. Did you resist in your own way? We all do. So expect that. And be ready if and when the other person resists you to use the skill of empathic listening. There's a video on that, and there's an article on that in Lesson 2, an extraordinarily powerful communication and relationship skill, empathic listening. Now, that you've taken all these preparation steps, eight preparation steps, in case you're counting, pick the right time when you're undistracted the other person is undistracted. With these preparations in mind, ask if you if the other person will let you give them some feedback. Be prepared for no. That's a separate issue. I'm going to assume that if they say, well, what, or okay, give them your assertion, your confrontation, in a respectful, calm, good eye contact, brief way. A confrontation often can sound like, I need you to know when you do certain behavior, which you name specifically, behavior that could be recorded on a video camera or a, an audio recorder. When you do X, here's how it affects me. This is called an iMessage. It's a specific tool. There's another video that explains that in the tip to lesson two. Uh, when you behave in a certain way, blah, 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 and you describe the certain way, this is how it affects me. You do not blame, accuse, criticize the other person. You tell them how their behavior affects you, or you tell them what you need. <clears throat> they will probably resist you, or numb out, or make excuses, or explain, or bring up the past, or bring up an irrelevant subject. Those are all resistances. 
use empathic listening and say back what you hear briefly in your own words watch for them to go uh-huh or yeah and then reassert reconfront repeat what you said briefly calmly directly wait to see if they resist you again if they do use empathic listening again repeat your confrontation again until they either hear you or they bring up information that would promote the two of you to do mutual mutual problem solving there's another video on that okay or they say okay i'm sorry i will try to comply and get some form of agreement that's that's believable um, notice the bulk of a successful confrontation comes in planning um, compare what I've just outlined to you the last time you confronted somebody. Did you do these steps? I suspect you did not. If you didn't, don't blame yourself and don't feel guilty. I suspect no one has ever outlined this process to you before and or has not coached you as you've tried it and learned. You'll inevitably make some mistakes. After you try a confrontation, whether it's successful or not, um, try and find a time to review what happened. Did I get what I needed? If so, why? If not, why? Answering these questions requires that you hone the incredibly powerful skill of personal awareness. That's the first skill of seven that you'll learn in lesson two in my nonprofit website, sfhelp.org. I hope this uh, brief video has motivated you to think about confrontations in a new and constructive way. I hope it motivates you to try them with somebody whose behavior bothers you and notice the results, including notice what happens to your own self-esteem. Invest some time in studying at least lessons one through four in my website and take a look at the other videos relative to those lessons. I hope this is useful to you. Thanks for watching.